Welcome back. This week, Alan Turing and Turing Tumble build marble powered computers. Who was Alan Turing? Who was that guy? Who do you think? Well, he was a genius, basically. Uh, Alan Turing lived from 1912 to 1954, and he was the founder of computer science, and he was a cryptographer. This is his grave. Uh, on his grave, it's like a, a plaque. Uh, his work was key to breaking the wartime Enigma codes, and he lived and died right where this is placed in England. Uh, so basically... In World War II, Germany's back featuring Hitler, the angry mustache model, and he's mad at the Jews for existing. The Germans, Nazi Germany, they needed uh, a way to send messages, to send secret military communications without their enemies figuring it out. Uh, otherwise, uh, then they wouldn't be able to do sneak attacks and things like that. So, they, to do so, they used a coding device called the Enigma machine. They invented this machine which basically enciphered uh, messages. It coded messages for them to be able to send, and only someone with this machine, with another copy of this machine on the other end, could read the message. That was the idea. Uh, so, basically, the British were at war with Nazi Germany. So, here we have uh, Germany attacking uh, Great Britain, the UK, and they're sending their bombers and their fighters to attack all sorts of little cities and uh, places in the UK, and they were trying to fight back. The UK thought, well, if they could just decode these German messages that were all garbled code signals, they could maybe figure out when these fighter attacks were happening, and they could gain the upper hand and counterattack and defeat the German assaults before they even came and attacked. So Alan Turing was a really intelligent person. He, he invented a way, with lots of work, uh, he invented a way to decode these German messages. Uh, then basically the war ended a lot faster because the British could now understand what their enemies were saying, thanks to Alan Turing's decoding. That's World War II. Uh, the bomb, Bombay machine. This was basically, this was Turing's uh, his prototype, his deciphering machine, and it led directly to the creation of the world's first working computer. So basically, because of Alan Turing, computers are everywhere today, uh, even in our pockets. And Turing's inventive mind saved countless lives in World War II, and he created an entirely new branch of science, computer science. So thanks, Alan Turing. You're awesome. Uh, and based on Turing's, essentially, his, the way he was thinking about uh, decoding things and the way he was thinking about computers, there's a, a game that was made. It's called Turing Tumble. Uh, and it's a puzzle game, but it's a way to understand physically, basically, uh, how computers work. So with on-off switches, essentially binary, and it really helps you understand concepts of computer science a little better. So the objective in this, basically this game, uh, is to get the right amount of balls to the bottom of the board in the right order without letting any of the balls fall. Okay, they have to be carried down through each, a, a, a big, basically a series of these little levers and they have to be carried down right to the bottom where they go. And then uh, that will complete the puzzle. However, you're supposed to complete it. Let's watch a video of how this happens with the physical board, the board game itself. So as the ball is released, it goes through and it can trigger all sorts of different uh, little mechanisms that you could place. Uh, so for example, the blue are, are basically bits they can remember a pattern and then they can send a ball one way or the other, depending on uh, which, if they're turned on or off. And they get carried down and back and forth. And uh, these different mechanisms allow you to basically create different patterns of data just with these little balls. And so for this uh, example, it's 
the objective is to create a pattern, blue, blue, red, red, blue, blue, red, red. And there they did it. All right, when you're ready to get started on the assignment, go up to the top and click on your tab for Seesaw. And here's the assignment. It says, uh, next, after you watch the lesson here, of course, next click here to access the Turing Tumble Puzzle Book. Okay, so you want to click this big long link here to get to the Turing Tumble Puzzle Book. And it's here, and this is it. And it'll load, it might load a little bit slow. It's a big, huge PDF. Uh, but it also says, finally, click here to open the, digi the digital Turing Tumble board right here. Uh, and it says, try to complete at least five, the first five puzzles. However, I challenge you to complete as many as you can. Uh, so this is, this is normally something I would do for enrichment. But since we're in digital learning space and we're learning asynchronously, I get to make this lesson for everybody. And if you really want to uh, excel, if you want to really uh, go to the next level, I, try, I challenge you to try and beat as many of these puzzles that I'll show you uh, as you can. So we're going to open these two things, this puzzle book and the board. So here's the board. Ooh, cool, and it's pretty great. It's physics enabled. Uh, the balls fall realistically, uh, and they trigger just like the board does in real life. Okay, you can reset the balls like that. But the again, our purpose is to try and get the balls to go down in a certain order down here, and to never drop. Okay, so when I just did that, they're all dropping. This is not how you're supposed to do it. Uh, they want to be carried down via the uh, the mechanisms which I'll show you in a bit but let's get to the puzzle book because this is important you actually want to have the puzzle book open and you want to have the Turing tumble board open at the same time okay so you have the board and you have the puzzle open so you can see both at once okay then you can see what you're supposed to do and you can work on it here by putting your pieces in and trying to make them work like that, okay? But let's let's focus on the book. Let's read the introduction. You're about to enter a hidden inner world of computers, the part that nobody sees deep inside where the true magic happens. Remove the hard opaque shell of the computer chip and you'll find a device full of ingenious, ingenious logic and astounding creativity. Chips are made of a multitude of tiny switches called transistors, which are formed at the surface of various materials layered on the surface of silicon. They aren't mechanical switches like we're used to seeing. There's no moving parts. These switches in a computer are controlled by electrons. And pushing electrons in one side and the main flow of electrons through the switch is cut off. Stop pushing electrons and the flow resumes. The switches themselves are interesting, but it's the clever ways the switches are connected to each other that make a computer smart. Over the next 60 puzzles, you'll discover how simple switches can be connected together to do surprisingly smart things. So the switches, though the switches are mechanical instead of electrical, there's theoretically no limit to what you can create with them. Okay. So that's the introduction there. But here's the real introduction. So this is a, a cool little sci-fi story to set up why we're building these puzzles here. The adventure begins. So I'll try to just summarize this sci-fi story intro for you. But if you wanna if you wanna read it yourself, then maybe just skip ahead in the video just a few minutes. So it's a pretty cool little comic intro. But basically, so the main character, she's this uh, scientist, uh, and she's in a spaceship trying to fix a satellite on this strange alien planet and she's got this robot helper person and she she's going to try and fix the satellite but uh, she messes up and the robot smashes into the satellite but she takes longer and then suddenly there's these weird beams of light and they cut a hole in her ship and she's trying to fix the ship but it's suddenly crashing onto the, the alien planet and she crashes crash lands um, and she realizes that she's her her ship is broken and she's her life support systems are down and she's running out of oxygen she only has eight hours left so she needs to uh, explore the planet and find water that she can uh, turn into basically oxygen to breathe um, but she's running out of time and then she's only got an hour left she hears this strange noise over the the sensors and it's a 
a weird alien, uh, black alien s spire building in the distance, a huge building. And um, she goes and it opens up and there's this, this sound. She thinks it's water, but it's really these, these tiny little balls, millions of these little balls all falling and flipping switches. And she sees an alien skeleton even, and, and then she realizes maybe it was trying to fix this this uh, giant mechanism. And maybe this mechanism is a giant computer uh, that's mechanical instead of electrical. And so she's trying to fix it. And that's the setup for this game, basically. You're, you, you're trying to fix these uh, panels on this alien computer that's mechanically run with these little falling, dropping uh, little metal balls. And here's the rules. Oh yeah, by the way, you can also get to uh, this this book and this uh, machine itself, the Turing Tumble Board, by going to my website. And you can go to uh, either third, fourth, or fifth, or under fun stuff too, and I've put it under there too, just so you know. You can flip through this uh, puzzle book, and after you get past the part with the story, it shows you how to play. And here's the rules. Each challenge has an objective. You must create a machine that completes the objective. To start the machine, you must start uh, by pushing the press button. In our digital version of this game, okay, we're not gonna have a press button. Uh, instead, whenever you see the press button symbol here, uh, you'll just have to press, click on whatever side, uh, the red or the blue balls. Uh, and it says to press. Okay, so it says maybe down here with the press button or right here. You just click up here or right there. Okay, and that will start it up. Uh, once the machine is in motion, you cannot touch the machine or otherwise interfere with it. So that's another rule. So basically, you, you, you just start your puzzle once by clicking once on whatever size, side it tells you and then uh, watch the balls go. And if it if it completes correctly without you touching anything, then you did it right. The fourth rule, uh, your machine cannot let balls drop. Okay, so they can't drop like this uh, from a space to a space. It has to be carried down uh, all the way. So the balls must pass directly from one part to the next and they can't just fall down. Okay. So the challenge is they start easy and they get harder and harder, okay? But it starts really easy. So the, for challenge one, it basically it gives you the answer. It says, okay, so here's Elia thinking, okay, I built the starting setup, but now it looks like I need to figure out where to put these four ram ramps. Oh, I know, they need to go here, 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 and here. So for each challenge, for this first challenge, uh, basically, it tells you where to put the first starting pieces here. So you, it says, okay, so you want to put one, two, three, four, five, six of these green pieces here. Okay, so I'll just do it here uh, on here to show you. So you can put the green piece here. Then it says to put another one here. Uh, but you want to switch it places. To switch it, you just click back on here. And then there was one there, 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 and there. Okay, so there we've got our starting setup, and then we have available parts over here. It says we have four more of these green pieces. Okay, so, well, okay, one, two, three, four, just to get them to be carried down. Uh, so, it says here at the top, too, objective, make all of the blue balls and only the blue balls reach the end. So, required output is all blue. Okay, so, I'll click the blue to get it started and let's see if it does it. I can speed it up here with this rabbit button and I did it without touching anything else. We got, we got the first puzzle done. Okay, let's go on to the next puzzle. Okay, puzzle two. This one you have to complete on your own here. Objective, make all of the blue balls and only the blue balls reach the end. So again, we want the same output, but we, we start with a different starting setup here. Okay, so we have these six going over this way this time, and now we have five of these to use. Okay, so let's give it a try. To reset your board here, an easy way to do it is you click this button up here, see this little board button, and then you click the small red board. 
okay? And that resets everything. You can also just uh, click here and then just kind of erase. That's the erase button too. Uh, so we want to have one go there, 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 there. That's six. That's our starting setup. Okay, we got our starting setup and we have five more we can use. Okay, well I think I want to start bringing it back because if we want only the blue balls to go, we have we have to get them to trigger the blue ball trigger here. Okay, so I want to put them here, 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 here. Okay, that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Ta-da! Let's try this. And here they go. And let's see. Does it is it gonna go the whole time? Yep. Awesome. So there's puzzle two. That wasn't too hard. Okay, let's see uh, the next puzzle. <laughs> puzzle three. Now it starts to get a little more interesting, okay? Uh, I think I'll show you this one last puzzle as an example, and then I want you to do as many as you can after this. You can follow these this uh, booklet. Remember, there's 60 of these puzzles, and uh, try to complete as many as you can. Yeah. Maybe uh, take a screenshot of the furthest of the furthest solution that you got, or as far as you got in the book, and uh, post it onto Seesaw when you're when you're all done playing. But let's try this one last puzzle here. What's it say? It says objective: release one blue ball, and then all of the red balls. Okay. Now we have to start with pieces here, here, and here, and here. Okay. So let's reset. You can zoom in and out on the Turing board too with scroll, with the scroll wheel. Uh, and again, you can speed up and slow down how the puzzle goes here. We start with a piece here, and we start with a piece here, and we start with pieces, uh, looks like here and here and here and here. It's important you get the right starting setup, otherwise your puzzle could get, uh, could be like not possible to solve. I have six to use here, only six. Okay, so I know I want to make a piece go this way. One, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I think I did it. All right, so let's test it out. So here we go. So we did one blue. Now we go and we're triggering all the reds. And cool. We did it. So to finish, uh, I want you to do at least five of these puzzles, if you can, okay? Do, do as many as you possibly can. Once you get to the very last one, you uh, until you get tired of it or whatever, um, you can do those three buttons and take a screenshot of your final puzzle and your solution, okay? Ta-da! And then post it on Seesaw. And then you're done! Now this is a really, this this uh, assignment is really long potentially uh, it would be impossible for you to do all the puzzles in one sitting okay so try to come back to this one if you have fun with it and try to do you know you could do potentially all the puzzles but it'll take you quite a while to get through them all but go for it because I, I bought this uh, digital book for you guys and now that we have this digital version of this it's totally fun so have fun with it I'll see you next time.